My name is Daniel Suelo, and I haven't earned or spent a single cent in 14 years, and I live totally without money. I've actually been sleeping in caves longer than I've lived without money, probably since the mid-90s. This here is one of my sleeping places. Use cardboard for a pad, works great. When I had a job, a respectable job in town, I decided I didn't want to pay rent anymore and live outdoors. So I, I've lived in caves all up and down these canyons. And this over here is a place where I sit and I, yeah, I have an extra blanket here that I use if it's really cold, but I have to sit here and relax. I bring books up or magazines that I find and read them. I'm collecting some onions. These are wild onions. Just eat the tops for like chives or get the whole bulb. You want to do some good cooking with it. I really do feel that wild edibles are a lot more nutritious than domestic. I think in domestication, we, we domesticate or breed for more for flavor or for a sweetness rather than nutrition. <laughs> Delicious. This here is the kitchen. I've eaten lizards around here and grasshoppers and ants. One time I found a raccoon down at the road, freshly killed and brought him up and cooked it. Okay, now I'm gonna saute the onions and potatoes in this pan with some oil. There's like fat squirrels everywhere and deer, but I actually don't feel comfortable killing anything when there's so much getting thrown away. There's like fresh meat thrown away all the time in the dumpsters. I find that it's really rare that I get sick when I'm living outdoors. The only times I've gotten sick from dumpsters is if I've eaten too much sweets, but I've never gotten like dysentery from a dumpster. I've never like vomited or whatever from a dumpster. It was really hard for me to, to deal with when I first gave up money was being on the receiving end of charity because often it's condescending. The giver is the superior one, the taker is the inferior one. The library is kind of like my office and my living room. <laughs> um, yeah, I come here to work on my blog and do emails. And uh, There are some valid points about using the library when it's paid for by taxes. And it's the one exception to my rule that I, I don't take government assistance. I've foregone everything else. I don't take food stamps. I don't go to the food bank. This is the closest way I know to publish ideas for free. It's an amazing time we're living in. I can write blogs and publish them to the whole world in a website that no one has to pay for. I like Moab and I, I really love the people. There's a certain mentality that's attracted to Moab. It's a mentality that doesn't like the system and is open to alternatives. My town camp for when I don't have time to go up the canyon. I have stuff going on in town, I stay here. And it's pretty primitive. I prefer staying up the canyon. This is kind of like uh, my classic hobo camp. <laughs> Christianity, the Bible is very important to me and I do feel like it influenced my life deeply. My father, he became a minister of a church. My mother, she got us reading the Bible a lot growing up. I taught them God's word. I just believed that this is what I was supposed to do. He was a good thinker. 
even as a child. And, uh, but what got Honig got started on the life he's in now, I don't know, it just uh, seems to work into it. Uh. My roommates and my friends were constantly challenging my conservative religious beliefs. And I was hearing the usual from the family. College is corrupting Daniel. That's actually where I felt like I rejected my faith when I was in the Peace Corps. In a lot of ways, I... Uh, thought of myself as some kind of, like, I'm here to set Christianity straight because it's, it's off the path. Why is it that we're not following the teachings of Jesus? Like, why is it that we just worship this icon but don't actually practice these things? Yeah, I, I feel like we should stop worrying and live like birds. That's basically a paraphrase of the Sermon on the Mount. The birds don't worry, and they don't carry around possessions, and they don't worry about money, and they get everything they need. I'm employed by the universe. Since everywhere I go is the universe, I'm always secure. Life has flourished for billions of years like this. I never knew such security before I gave up money. Wealth is what we are dependent upon for security. And my wealth never leaves me. I looked around and I just felt like people seem unhappier here than they in Ecuador. Here everything's just so manicured and fake. And I'd go into grocery stores and freak out. There's too many choices. And everything's consume, consume, consume. It was all just too much for me. It was just like, I can't handle this. And my depression just kept, felt like it kept getting worse. I didn't see how it could get any worse, but it just kept, I kept sinking more and more. And um, thinking more and more about suicide a lot. And I thought something's wrong. I can't handle being alive anymore. It's just impossible. So that weekend, I drove up to Mount Evans in Colorado to check out cliffs. <laughs> so I went up the road a ways and did a Yui and then gunned the gas. The last thing I remembered, the edge of the cliff hitting the floorboard of the car. Then it was just blackness after that. I opened my eyes, I didn't feel anything, it was just numbness. But I looked up and it, everything was red. The blood was in my eyeballs. And I remember thinking, oh shit, I'm still alive. And then I just remember blacking out again. And then the next thing I remembered, I woke up and I was at the side of the road. And I was like, wow, how did I get up here? If I heard this car coming down from the summit, and I kept going back and forth between wanting to live and wanting to die. And as he got closer, I was thinking, I don't want to see him, want him to see him, me here. I just want to die. And I hope he passes me by. Sure enough, he passed me by and went on. And as he went by, I remember thinking, that fucker, <laughs> what's the matter with people? <laughs> And then I started praying that somebody would come and find me. And sure enough, another car was coming down. And I was like praying that it would stop, and then he stops. And I just blanked out again. I didn't understand at first why in the world uh, he wanted to commit suicide. One reason was is he, he, uh, he was gay. Uh, he is gay. He's a, a gay person, and he and he knew that uh, I, I've always been pretty strict about morals and all this sort of thing, you know. And I think it. Uh, he was afraid that the family might disown him. He'd always told us 
all of his kids that he had unconditional love for us. But he said, you know, uh, honestly, a sin I con always considered worse than murder was homosexuality. We're born in sin, and we're all sin. All of sin didn't come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. Well, that's another sin. Now, it's one we think is pretty serious, but he don't think it is. Then he said, you know, um, this is gonna take me some time to adjust to, and you have to understand the generation I came from and the culture I came from. We used to talk about killing gay people. And he said, God threw a curveball at me here, and this is a big test. He said, well, I'm that way, I can't help it. And I said, I know it, and I, I agree with that. I don't, not chide you for that. But to me, it have to, should be a, a, a virgin about it. <laughs> but they never got to the point of full acceptance, which I never really expected. So I went back to Moab and resumed my job at the women's shelter as the homeless coordinator. It was there that I decided I didn't want to live in a house, that I wanted to live in a cave. Plus, I was just trying to save money and I moved into a cave and continued to go to work and they called me the homeless homeless coordinator. <laughs> and it's like I got this vision of my head just being this weed garden full of nonsense thoughts, most of them negative, just thoughts cluttering my head that were inhibiting my whole life. And I thought, this is the root of my depression. And I thought, I don't care if it takes till I'm 80 years old. Every thought I encounter, I'm just gonna pull it up like a weed and let it go. I was like, wow, this is so simple. And I somehow felt like I have a choice here. It's like I'm not a victim of the universe anymore. As weeks went by, I just felt myself feeling lighter and happier until finally I just felt like my depression was gone. And at the same time, I felt like letting go of possessions, useless possessions, like useless thoughts and useless possessions go hand in hand. So it was like this total cleaning of my life. So it took me basically the 90s to do that until I finally got up the courage to give up my last money. And I took the money out of my pocket and I went to a phone booth similar to this in Pennsylvania and I put it on top and I figured somebody will take it. And, and when I did that, it was, it felt really mystical to me. It was, I walked out and it, it just felt like freedom, like warm water was pouring over my head. And, uh, and I just felt like, wow, I feel completely comfortable and completely free. I feel like I'm at home. And it doesn't matter where I am, I feel like I'm at home. And liberation.